are fun and easier to do than most other classes that are based on martial application for fighting. Our emphasis in Qigong Tai Chi is on healing and regeneration and is based on the principles of acupuncture. So let us begin the warm-ups with a move we call the washing machine. This move is a general loosener upper, and like all Tai Chi moves, it originates in the feet, issues through the waist, and expresses itself in the arms. The upper torso remains as relaxed as possible. This move squeezes and stretches your internal organs and moves the energy into your arms. As you loosen up, I would like to take this opportunity to say that this class is divided into four sections. The first is loosening of the joints. The second are special health-related exercises. The third is self-massage and acupressure. And the fourth is the five-minute Tai Chi style itself. I also want to mention that in this class, we don't believe in the saying, no pain, no gain. We believe in no brain, no gain. So just use your head and don't overdo anything. Now I want to point out three things that differentiate Eastern exercise from Western. Number one, the Chinese emphasize that all exercises are done as relaxed as possible. Number two, your mind should be focused on what you're doing at all times. And number three, all breathing is deep, diaphragmatical breathing, which we'll be practicing in two moments. The next warm-up is called pushing up the sky. Exhale when your hand pushes up and inhale when it comes down. It complements the first move because it also squeezes and stretches your organs, but now in an up and down direction. We always say, don't start your day without freshly squeezed organs. Now we go to the head and neck area and then slowly work our way down the body, loosening up all the joints. The first move is called the turtle. And while it works the vertebrae of the neck, it also squeezes and stretches the thyroid. You inhale as the chin goes up, and exhale as it goes down. The turtle sinks into his shell. Be sure to keep the thyroid stimulated, because in addition to all the physical problems an underactive thyroid can cause, it can also cause severe depression in some seniors. Now we work on the neck and thyroid from side to side. Inhale on each side and exhale when the head relaxes in the middle. Also note how the hands go to the opposite side of the body from the head. This gives a greater squeeze to the thyroid. Now let's take a moment to stimulate the thymus gland. It's located right behind the breastbone. The Chinese regard this gland as the youth gland and feel that if you can regenerate it, you can actually retard the aging process. So thump that thymus and let's see what happens. Now let's work on the shoulders with a move called holding up the sky. Inhale up, exhale down, rotate left, rotate right, and bend down, but not too far. This move is called the butterfly. You inhale when the hands come up, exhale when they go down behind you. And these moves are just like swimming. This one is like swimming the back stroke. Inhale up in front, exhale down the back. This is like doing the crawl and stretch out as far as you can and stretch your spine. Now we finish by inhaling when the hands go to the back and exhaling when they are in front. Be sure to turn your head and watch the hand in the back. Keep in mind I'm doing the minimum number of moves in each posture, and if you have an area that needs extra work, don't hesitate to spend more time on it. Now loosen up the wrists and be sure to rotate them in both directions. Take them out good and get the blood into the fingers. Now the next move is for the spine, and to do them, we need to sit down. These moves that you get to sit down seem to be everybody's favorites, I've noticed. Exhale down and try to get your chin to your knees as you rotate around. Inhale up and really open up your chest as you sit upright. Reverse directions after three times and go slowly so you don't get dizzy. Everybody up now. 
now while we work on the lower spine and hips. This time your head doesn't move, only the lower part moves. Rotate in both directions on this move also. Hey, it looks pretty good. If you don't become Tai Chi masters, you can always become belly dancers. Now we go down to the knees. They travel together for a while in both directions. Then they separate into a move I call the Charleston. And the right knee goes both clockwise and counterclockwise. We finish the series by loosening the ankles. Make as large a circle with your heel as possible and rotate both feet in both directions. Now we get to sit down again. Shake out your ankles just like you did your wrists. The Chinese consider the ankles and wrists as the gates to the body so they should be kept open and as loose as possible. <coughs> they feel a person can actually exchange energy with the earth through their feet and hands, so there's a lot of emphasis on keeping these gates open. Now we come to the section of special exercises. These have been selected as being the most beneficial and effective exercises a senior can do. They are deep breathing, stimulation of the pituitary, and the arm and leg swings. We begin with deep breathing. The value of breathing deep can't be overemphasized. Seniors are notorious shallow breathers. We all come into this world doing deep diaphragmatical breathing, but over the years, the breath gets shallower and shallower. We must reverse that tendency, and I not only want you to breathe deeply while doing Tai Chi, I want you to do it all the time. It's done by imagining a balloon in your lower abdomen, and when you inhale, the balloon goes out. When you exhale, your abdomen goes in. This is easier to do on your back, so practice it at night. Deep breathing gives you more oxygen and energy. It massages your intestines, it lowers your metabolic rate, and it actually has a very profound calming effect on you, both physically and psychologically. So practice every day until you breathe this way all the time. the pituitary, which is located in the exact center of the brain. This move is called the elephant raises its trunk. And according to the Chinese, when you raise your arms and direct your gaze upward, your energy goes to your head, which is exactly what we want it to do. On the third move, when both hands go up, you hold your breath for three seconds focus your mind on your pituitary. This move requires developing sensitivity to what is going on inside your body, and that's a great skill to have. As you do this, feel the energy going up into your spine, into your head, and feel a slight increase in pressure inside your skull, and focus it into the center of your brain. The pituitary is considered the master gland of the body, and if it is regularly stimulated, there's a greater chance of maintaining a hormonal balance. Now we change our focus from the center of our brain to the center of our chest. This is one of the few exercises we don't coordinate with the breath. Only push back, never lift up in the front, and let your arms swing as freely as possible, and breathe deeply. It should almost be effortless, and this could possibly be the best singular exercise a senior can do. This exercise is mostly used for breathing difficulties such as bronchitis, emphysema, and so forth. But we've discovered that it has also been known to lower blood pressure. It's good for arthritis of the hands, for situs of the shoulders, and so forth. Feel your chest being pulled open, the blood going into your fingers, your shoulders raising and lowering. I want you to do this one at least 15 minutes a day, and you can combine it with walking if you want. Be consistent with it. We've gotten a lot of good results with this one. Next, we do the leg swing. 
and note that it is done on an angle. The swinging foot goes over the stationary one, and this creates a squeeze in the groin, which is intentional, because many of your lymph nodes are in the groin, and by stimulating them, you are stimulating your immune system to some extent. And in this day and age, our immune systems need all the help they can get. This exercise is also good for leg circulation and for the hips. While holding onto the chair, see if you're more comfortable swinging the inside or your outside leg. Now we go to massage in the acupressure section of the class. The first thing we have to do is to get some energy into our hands. We all have some healing ability to some extent, but for most people it goes to waste because they never utilize it or develop it. Now, calm your eyes and feel the heat and the pressure from your hands relaxing your facial muscles. A lot of people have no idea how much tension they carry in their face. This exercise is not only good for relaxing your face, it can sometimes heal your eyes. So if you have any kind of eye trouble, prolong this exercise and see if it can help the problem. Re-stimulate your hands every moment or so to keep the tingle going. For what is life without a little tingle? Now massage the base of your nose and under your eyes. I want you to know that we're not only stimulating the nose, there are important acupressure points in this area that relate to the large intestines and stomach. And in a very real way, we are indirectly stimulating them when we do our nose. And to massage your eyes and forehead, Use your thumb and index finger to pinch your eyebrows from the inside corner to the outside. Your thumb relaxes your eye muscles and your index finger relaxes your forehead muscles. Now, work on your temple muscles by slowly circulating your fingers back towards your ears. Then, work on your ears. Remember, every part of your body is represented on your ears, so do a thorough job. The back of the ear relates to the spine. The inner ear relates to all your internal organs. And an ear low, pulling down on that, is like stimulating the head. Now don't press on your ears like this if you have a hearing aid in. This exercise regulates the pressure in the inner ear and can sometimes even cure ringing in the ears. We finish the face by stimulating the mouth, and that is done by using your own tongue. Roll it around three times to the left, three times to the right. Then bite your teeth quickly together 36 times. First, nine times in the front and nine times on the right. Then just bite the four back molars together gently and quickly and then nine times on the left. And then swallow down. The only time you click your teeth together is when you're eating. Scientists have found that when the teeth click together, it intensifies peristalsis, or the wave-like motion in your intestines. So in reality, you're actually stimulating your entire digestive system by doing this seemingly simple exercise. Now we go to the back of the head. The point we work on is where the spine disappears into the skull. Tap it with your middle fingers. This is called beating the drum, and this point is called the jade pillow point. This stimulates your whole neural system and is good for memory. Actually, it's supposed to make you smarter, so keep tapping until you feel smarter. After that, stimulate the entire cranium. Now, there are many important points on the top of the head, so be very thorough with this one. And don't forget, these warm-ups are based on the principles of acupuncture, which means there's a lot more to them than meets the eye. We finish the head by gently pressing on the eight cranial bones in order to keep them flexible. Now, press your head back against your hands while looking up and inhaling. Then lower your head and exhale. This helps to strengthen your neck muscles also. Now, we massage the neck and shoulders in hopes of softening them. <coughs> Always massage them in this direction Think of those tight muscles as like ice cubes melting into water, and the water changing to steam. Then you direct the steam down the inside of the arm to 
your palm. This is the direction that the energy naturally flows according to the principles of acupuncture. So if you have a problem with your shoulders, you massage it this way. Elbow is done this way, and so forth. Now there are a couple of acupuncture points in the arm I'd like to go into because they're so useful. The first one can be found at the end of the crease at the elbow. This is sometimes called the antibiotic point because it's so effective against infection in the body. It also influences your immune system, so keep it well stimulated. The other point is called the valley point because it is located in the soft flesh between the thumb and the index finger. This point is good for headaches, stress, tension, anger, anything where there's too much energy in the head. And this is probably the most used point in all of acupuncture. And now we continue down the body by massaging the abdomen. This direction is for constipation. It follows the natural direction of the large intestine. And this direction is for diarrhea. And don't confuse it with what you wish you had. <laughs> Even chronic cases have been known to be helped with this massage. And if you press really hard and long enough, it can even flatten your stomach. And knowing you all, that's what I need to say to get you to really do this. Now for lower back pain, rub vigorously up and down, heat up those muscles, and then just leave your hands there. It's always best to focus your mind on what you're trying to heal because it enhances the healing process. But many students have found that if they just leave their hands there for a long period of time, like when they're watching TV or something, their back still feel better. Remember, your hands are better than hot pads because they have an innate healing power in them. So let's use them. <laughs> Massaging your legs, the natural flow is down the outside and up the inside, just the opposite of the arm. If you have a sore hip or knee, then massage them in this way only. It's always best to use both hands together because of the polarity that develops between them. The hand on the outside goes down only, the hand on the inside comes up only. If you have swollen ankles or feet, do them like this, down the outside and up the inside. Now there's a really useful point on the leg that I want you to know about. It's called Suit Sign Lead. It means three inches below the knee. Unfortunately, it means three Chinese inches, and who knows what that means. At any rate, below and to the outside of your knee, there's a big soft spot. That isn't it. But just below that, there's a bone, so 